For this video, our group will discuss about topic 2 mass spectrometry part 6 about fuel ionization and fuel desorption and its applications. We'll start by looking at what is mass spectrometry. As a brief introduction, mass spectrometry is the analytical technique that ionizes chemical substances then sorts the ions based on mass to charge ratio. The mass spectrometer is an instrument used for measuring unknown substances or molecules through the mass of the ions. There are three main components in mass spectrometry devices and they are the ion sources, mass analyzer and the detector. The sample will be passed through an electric field and magnetic field forming charged particles. These charged particles will then be categorized into their different masses under mass filtration as the lighter ions are deflected more than the heavier ions. The detector will be used to determine what particles are present. For better understanding, you can view this video. The link is down in the description box below. The technique of fuel ionization consists of passing the vapors of a material in their gaseous state through a region of intense electric field to polarize and ultimately ionize the molecules by the removal of electrons. The ions are then mass analyzed using standard mass spectrometric techniques. A strong electric field is capable of removing electrons from a molecule to form a molecular ion. This process is for molecules that have high thermal stability. Fuel ionization produces molecular ions from most organic compounds. When a complex mixture is analyzed by this technique, we obtain a single peak for each constituent or for a group of constituents that shares the same nominal molecular weight. By repeated scanning, we can obtain a quantitative molecular weight profile of complex mixtures. The results are then presented in the form of a spectrum as shown in the first figure. An example of fuel ionization can also be seen from the second diagram inserted, showing the process of electrospray ionization. When applied using organic compounds, this procedure causes minimal fragmentation and produces only the molecular ions. Thus, Complications arising from fragmentation during ionization are minimized. Another advantage of fuel ionization is that the relative, relative fuel ionization efficiencies of various hydrocarbon types are within a factor of 2 from the hydrocarbon. Thus, even without any corrections for sensitivity, the fuel ionization mass spectrum represents the true molecular weight profile accurately. The sum spectra consists of number 1. Intact molecular ions from individual chemical species originally present in the sample. Number 2. Ions produced from any ion fragmentation that may occur. And molecular ions of fragments that are generated thermally during the ramped heating. The ion fragments are most often totally negligible as asserted above. But the thermal fragments can be substantial depending on the volatility and reactivity of a sample. Field desorption is another method of forming ions. An analyte here refers to a substance which chemical constituents are being identified. In the procedure of field desorption, this analyte is first applied as a thin film to an emitter with a sharp surface. The emitter is then slowly heated up, causing a high electric field to pass through. This process results in the ionization of low vapor pressure materials that are then dissolved into the mass spectrometer. Unlike in the fuel ionization, the sample is directly applied in the solid or liquid state onto the emitter before being ionized. This is as opposed to the gaseous state in fuel ionization. As some compounds may not be thermally stable in the gaseous phase and thus is unable to undergo fuel ionization, fuel desorption can be used instead. Fuel ionization and fuel desorption, although similar in the sense that they are both methods to form ions, they have various differences. 
The methods in which samples are introduced into the ion source differs for fuel ionization and desorption. They also ionize different compounds, as fuel ionization deals with compounds that are more thermally stable as compared to fuel desorption where compounds are less thermally stable. In fuel ionization, there exists some fragmentation due to the heat for sample volatilization. This is where the sample is converted to gaseous state. Unlike in fuel desorption, where there is little to no fragmentation. From these two diagrams, we can see the sample of using D-glucose to show the difference in fragmentation between fuel ionization and fuel desorption. It can be observed in the fuel ionization spectrum that there are five fragmentations of different sizes, while in the fuel desorption spectrum, only one visible fragmentation was observed. These are various examples of how mass spectrometry is used in industries. We will be focusing on mass spectrometry in petrochemical industries, proteomics, and in drug discovery. Mass spectrometry plays an important role in quality control in chemical and petrochemical industries. As most petroleum samples contain complicated compounds, containing hundreds or even up to thousands of individual hydrocarbons, separating these molecules are relatively difficult. Using this method, we are able to analyze the petroleum and their products. Also, we are able to identify the separated compounds with the use of current spectra we have or via the help of our knowledge of the current chemical or physical properties of the molecules. To add on, qualitative and quantitative analysis of unseparated or partially separated complex mixtures can be made. There are several advantages of using mass spectrometry for quality control in the chemical and petrochemical industry. Using mass spectrometry, it, is it will be possible to create several quantitative analyses and detailed data of the individual molecules present in the complex mixtures. Furthermore, only, minutes of only minute samples will be required for the analysis. However, there are also limitations present. As some of the molecules have similar properties, it may be difficult to accurately differentiate them due to limitations of the mass spectrometer used. This hinders the effort in identifying them. Next, we will look at application of mass spectrometry in proteomics. Mass spectrometry methods are also being widely used these days in medical laboratories for quantifying many small molecular analytes as well as for many microbiological purposes. By all means, mass spectrometry can be classified as one of the most rapidly evolving analytical tools for the last few decades. Regarding the analysis of proteins, it is now most renowned for its widespread applications in the field of proteomics. Proteomics is the study of proteomes, which is a set of proteins used biologically. Two main ionization techniques of mass spectrometry can be used to study whole proteins. These techniques are firstly, matrix-assisted, laser desorption or ionization, MAUDI in short, and secondly, electrospray ionization, ESI. Intact proteins are ionized by either the two techniques described above, and then introduced to a mass analyzer. The most widely used instrument for people for peptide mass analysis are the MAUDI time of flight, which is the time it takes for the particles to travel a distance through a medium. Instruments as they permit the acquisition of peptide mass fingerprints. These peptide masses are measured through the MAUDI TOF or ESI TOF. These peptide masses are compared to either a database containing known protein sequences or even the genome. Firstly, let's take a look at MAUDI. This method can be observed in the diagram here. MAUDI method methodology undergoes three steps. First, the sample is mixed with a suitable matrix material and applied to the metal plate. Second, a pulsed laser is directed onto the sample, triggering vaporization and desorption of the mat matrix material and the sample. Finally, the analyte molecules are ionized by being protonated or deprotonated in the hot plume of vapor gases and can then be analyzed by passing through the mass spectrometer. 
Secondly, the method of electrospray ionization can also be used in the field of proteomics. In electrospray ionization, ions of interest are formed by, from solution by applying a high electric field. This is done by applying a high electric field to the tip of the capillary from which the solution will pass through. The sample will be sprayed into electric field along with the flow of nitrogen to promote dissolvation. Droplets will form and will evaporate in the vacuumed area. This causes an increase in charge on the droplets and ions are now said to be multiply charged. These multiply charged ions can now enter the mass spectrometer and will be analyzed. Several different samples of the advantageous use of mass spectrometry would be the ability of the mass spectrometry to identify and mainly to pre precisely quantify thousands of proteins from complex samples that can be applied that can be expected to impact broadly on biology and medicine. As this process is very quick and takes only a few seconds for the data acquisition, the MAUDI TOF mass spectrometry can be used for very high throughput applications. As a side note, these high throughput technologies refers to a range of experimental and computational tools to acquire experimental data. Furthermore, native mass spectrometry does not require large amounts of sample. A minimum of 10 picomoles is sufficient. Typically, 100 to 500 picomoles are desired to allow samples optimization and multiple analysis. However, this mechanism also has some limitations. For MAUDI mass spectrometry, several factors originating from the ionization mechanisms and from instrumental setup analysis with high excess of one analyte over the other. It is important to prevent detection, detector saturation of high abundance species, and on the other hand, yet able to gain a signal above the ion threshold for the low abundant analyte. Although it is possible to enhance the signal of low abundant species by increasing the laser energy, this in turn can lead to saturation of high abundance species and can further cause peak broadening, resulting in an inaccurate reflection of the analytes present. Maldi mass spectrometry also does not account for impurities in the analyte, which might cause a difference in the mass of the sample being tested and the actual pure sample that is needed. Thus, mass spectrometry is not inherently quantitative because of the differences in the ionization efficiency or detectability of the many peptides. This in turn means that the intensity of the peak in a mass spectrum is not a good indicator of the amount of analyte present in the sample. In addition, <coughs> mass spectrometry is also application when it comes to drug discovery which will be discussed in the next few slides. Mass spectrometry is also widely used in the pharmaceutical industries for drug discovery. Drug discovery is the process by which potential new medications are discovered for use in treatments. Early in the testing of the drug, the sample is injected into the mass spectrometer. Certain biomolecular structures of the drug are identified through analysis of their mass charge ratio. These special structures are known as biomarkers and are often protein complexes, such as enzymes. By confirming the presence of these biomarkers, scientists know that the drug will have its intended use in future test runs. There are some distinct advantages of using mass spectrometry in drug discovery. For one, modern machines are now highly accurate in measuring mass charge ratio, making mass spectrometers one of the best technologies to analyze these drug samples. Another advantage is that using mass spectrometry early in the testing of the drug allows pharmacists to gauge the success of the drug. The absence of a certain biomarker, or the presence of an unwanted structure, all may cause adverse effects when consumed. As such, using mass spectrometry early in the testing of the drug prevents potential huge losses by these pharmaceutical companies. Of course, mass spectrometry is not without its limitations. One such disadvantage is that certain biomarkers, biomark such as protein complexes that are lower in charge, are harder for mass spectrometers to identify, meaning that certain structures may be recorded as absent or unaccounted for in early test runs of the drug. We've come to the end of our video. To summarize, these are the things we went through previously. We discussed about field ionization and desorption. We also discussed several applications of mass spectrometry in three different fields, namely in petrochemical industries, proteomics, and in drug discovery. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact us through the forum. 
Thank you for listening.